Today we're making a log cabin quilt block and turning it into a pillow. It's part of How to Quilt, our beginning series from AQS. You can find a link to the pattern and the series down in the description. Let's start with strip cutting. All of the squares and rectangles that we're going to need for our block, we're going to get from strips. For our first cut, we're going to want a straight edge. So I've lined up my two rulers. I have one that's going along the fold of my fabric and I have one that's covering that raw edge. I'm going to move this one out of the way and I'm going to cut, close my rotary blade. I've got that straight edge. Once I have my straight edge, I can start taking my measurement cuts. So the first strip I need is two and a half inches. I'm going to line up two and a half inches right along the edge of the fabric and trim. Once I have my strip cut, I'm going to need a straight cut edge at the end. So I've lined it up under my ruler again, and you'll notice I've put my ruler the long way so that I see that as much of the strip as sits under my ruler is straight. Um, this just really helps with accuracy later. I've got all that lined up with my raw edge, so I can move away my second ruler and get my straight cut edge. And then from there, I can start making my measurement cuts. I'm gonna take this ruler and I need a 10 and a half inch rectangle Ten and a half inch by two and a half inches. I've got that all lined up and I can make my cut and I'll just keep making that for the rest of my cuts. Once you have all the pieces cut out, it's a great idea to lay the block out. I like to do this with a little guide, one of which we've made for you and you can get that down in the description. I love to lay my quilt blocks out on the proppet, but if you don't have a proppet, just your workspace area will be great. When making log cabins, you always start piecing from the center. So I'm going to take these first two two and a half inch squares and I'm going to lay them right sides together. That's their pretty sides. And I'm going to get them all lined up and then under my machine, I have a quarter inch foot on. If you don't have a quarter inch foot, just mark that quarter inch seam allowance on your fabric. All right, I've got that all lined up. I'm ready to start sewing. Before pressing, we're going to want to check our seam allowance. You see here, as I move it towards that quarter inch line, all of my stitches are either right on or just behind that quarter inch line. That's a scant quarter inch seam allowance. This means that as I press, everything's going to come out the right size. You want to do it at this phase because as we start going on and on, any little problems we have are going to get amplified. Often at the beginning and ends of seams, you might have a little bit of curving in or curving out, which will make for a bigger or smaller seam allowance. That's the kind of thing that we're going to want to correct. That way we have a perfectly accurate log cabin block. Once we're sure our seam is just like we want it, we're going to go ahead and press towards the dark. I'm going to set it and then open it up and over that seam towards the dark. I'm doing a quick little finger press and then iron. Now that I have the center sewn, I'm ready to add my first rectangle. I'm going to always make sure that the new strip is on bottom. As I sew, I've got it all lined up. As we add new rectangles and start to press them, we're going to want to start pressing them towards the new strips. We do this because if we were to press towards the center always, we'd have a lot of seams going over each other and creating bulk. By pressing towards the new strip every time, we're going to reduce bulk and have a flatter block. I've gotten a few more rounds done and I want to measure and make sure it's coming out the right size as I come close to finishing up. I've got two rulers, neither of which is a large square, but we got this. I'm taking and I've got my six inch ruler and my 12 by six ruler. And I've got this one lined up all against one side down to that corner. And I'm using my other one to make sure I've got the measurement going the rest of the way. So going up, we can see that I'm at 12 and three quarters, which is what I want this to be. And then going this way, as we count, I'm at 12 and three quarters. That's the size it's supposed to be this round. So I'm ready to keep sewing. As we get to the end of this log cabin, the outermost strips have an extra quarter inch because we're going to be making a pillow and using a half inch seam allowance. So 
let's keep sewing. Once we've made our quilt block, we're ready to cut the back for our pillow. To do this, I have a about 12 inch piece of fabric and I am going to make a straight cut over here at the edge, just like we did before. Once I have that straight cut, I'm going to take, and I want to measure out 11 inches. Now that I've made my straight cut in one direction, I'm going to make another in the other direction. Now that I have three straight edges, I'm going to get my length measurement out of it. So I've got my six inches and I'm trying to get to 15 inches. Just the exact same size as our block front. All right, I've got that lined up just right. And I'm going to cut. So I have one rectangle that is 11 by 15. And then I'm going to trim my second rectangle to 10 by 15. So I'm going to be cutting an inch off. Now I'm ready to start making my pillow back. We're going to make an envelope closure for the back of the pillow. To do this, we're going to make a finished edge on our rectangles. I'm folding over the edge of the wide part of the rectangle. And starting in the middle, I'm going to start to press. I'm folding over about a quarter inch. I'm not too worried about it being very accurate as long as it's even. And then just creating little sections for myself and then coming over them with the iron. And this fold, I really want to make sure that I get a really crisp line. So I'm using a lot of time in my press. After I press the first fold, I'm going to roll it over one more time. This is going to completely encase any raw edges. And I'm going to start my press. You'll notice I'm doing just a little press first to make sure that that folds good. And then I go in with a longer press time. I want that edge really sharp so that as I sew, it'll remain really accurate. Once we have the edge folded over, we want to top stitch. We're going to top stitch from that inner fold, not the outer fold. This makes sure that we catch all of the fabric inside of our top stitching. Before sewing the pillow together, I'm going to mark my half inch seam allowance. But what I'm actually going to do is measure a two inch increment from my seam and mark that, that way I know everything that's inside of my seam line is actually exactly the size the pillow is supposed to be. I have my back pieces all done, my block is marked, I'm ready to clip all of this together and start sewing. So I'm going to lay my first pillow back piece over the block, right sides together. And I'm gonna get them all lined up even. And I'm going to take a couple little clips and I'm going to do that. I love this more than pins because with a big project like this, um, I'm inevitably going to poke myself and I think these clips are just really handy with craft projects. Then I'm going to take my second piece and with the envelope finished edges towards that inside, I'm going to create a little overlap and I'm going to line it up the block. And again, I like to clip at the edge and at those corners. I 
have it all layered right sides together and I'm ready to sew. I have lined it up with that marking that we made. As I reach that first corner, you'll see I'm going to sew right to the intersection. With my needle down, I'm going to pivot and keep sewing. We're good to do that because we're going to cut off that corner moment anyways. As I reach that last little bit of stitching, I'm just going to sew a few stitches past where I began. I'm going to turn the corners. I don't want to cut through that seam. I repeat that on all four corners. And once I have them all trimmed, as I turn it right sides out, I'm just going to gently push at the corners to make sure I get nice sharp points. And congratulations, you've made a log cabin pillow. If you'd like to show yours off, join our How to Quilt AQS Facebook group. The link is down in the description. See you next time, and as always, thanks for watching.